Welcome everybody to episode 23 of Tales from Tackle Shop. Um, some of you may think that you've missed last week's. They haven't. They definitely haven't. No. And we didn't forget. No. We made a, an executive decision. Yeah. We needed a break. We, we did and we didn't. We, we actually felt there was nothing to talk about. And that's right. It yeah. was the close, it started the close season. Yeah, everyone's on a downer. And we thought, what's the, we can't do another flat float. No, no, we couldn't do that, could we? No, we could try. <laughs> Get experts to do flat vote videos. Five times. So we made an executive decision not to do one last week. And um, just so everybody knows, we've got this one's coming out on Wednesday. So you guys are watching it Wednesday the 27th. And then we're going to have the penultimate episode yeah. on the 10th of April. Yeah. And would you like to announce the special guest? Um. I think I'll let you announce the special guest. I think you should announce the special oh. guest. Come on. Well, this has been a long time in the making, hasn't it? Yeah, and, uh, five years. Five years. Is that, yeah, five years. Well, Five years. He's a bit of celebrity. He's a big celebrity. Um, Drum roll. And he is Sir Bob Nudd. We've already gone and got... Well, pick touch wood. Yeah, all being well. All being well. Yeah. Sir so Bob is coming on the podcast. Yeah. He's got... Might have some pretty... Presents and bits and bobs. He's going to have I'm some hoping, presents, mate, because I'm going to give him some. I'm hoping he'll take them. Oh, you're, oh you've got presents for him? Yeah. I was hoping well, he was going to bring presents for you. Well, he might do. He might do. Yeah, you never know, do you? All I'm saying is I hope that my wardrobes are locked away in no hoodies <laughs> and signed T-shirts and CDs make an appearance. I haven't been in touch with any of your family no, members. No, too much. <laughs> Mm, the fact that my brother is working around your house might be a big giveaway. But I don't even know where they are. Your dad does, it's all right. Yeah, yeah. whatever. Yeah. He don't know what day of the week it is. <laughs> anyway, I'm really looking forward to this. So, yeah. message Bob, oh, it must have been a month ago, and he replied, yeah, I'd love yeah. to. And uh, I think he's spoken to you since. Yeah, he has, yeah. So, um, I, we did, I did say to him... We could do it at the tackle shop at my house. And I said, you know where I live? Because you mm. fish opposite me most yeah. most days. Yeah. And to be fair to Bob, he said, no, that's all right, Andy, I'll come around the house. So, Brilliant. So Bob's going to be in the, everyone calls it the red room. The red room. <laughs> Bob, I'm going to have Bob Nudd in my spare bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> Sir Bob Nudd. So if he's watching this, we'd probably just put him off. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. That'd be cool. So... Everything, if everything goes to plan, guys, that should be mm, two weeks top. Brilliant. So no podcast next week, but we're going to sign off with a spectacular podcast. Mm, a legend. The le yeah, he is. Yeah. You two have got to decide what you're going to talk about because it could be five hours long. Could be, yeah. Well, I mean, he obviously goes... he's been on lots of podcasts and things and people have mentioned things, but being Fen and Fishing TV, it's obviously got to be around this area, hasn't it? Mate, if he starts going on about all his world, which he, I mean, to be fair, I don't, he, he could go on. If we spoke about his world championship wins, yeah, which yeah. everyone would like, I'd love to hear about all yeah. this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it could be, it could be Five the hours. It could, I might have to like get more memory in the old computer and all yeah. sorts, but no, it, we'll, we'll get that sorted. So that would be awesome. So, if anyone's got any questions for good questions, so, yeah, so Bob, yeah. let us know. We'll pass them on. I'm really excited. Yeah. I'm gonna have to make sure the house is really clean. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What, so what drinks good. do you think he'd like? Mm. Well, we don't want any snacks. Do we need to go that far? No, I don't think so. No, I think I don't think he's that sort of bloke. You think he's a real coffee man yeah. like me, or mm. just plain water like you? A Guinness man, I would have said Prosecco? back in his day. Does he, Guinness, I would say in his day. Yeah. Does he want? Does he not want nibbles? What, what do you do with a legend? Well, I don't know. We'll find out, won't we? That's your department. <laughs> Should we take him to the tie after? I think that might be a bit too much. And then that. Griffin. <laughs> <laughs> Getting busting his... Uh, <laughs> busting his moves. Top 40 single. Yeah. Another date for the diary, before we forget, mm. and I'm going to put something out on um, some social media very soon, is April the 7th, mm. we're litter picking. Yep. So <clears throat> we have mentioned this several times, just to remind everybody. Um, I actually did a recce the other day. So Cheesy Bob... Yeah, I do. You know, I feel a bit bad because I kind of like volunteered him for this. But yeah, he's up for it. Cheesy Bob's going to do the March bypass. Yeah, uh, myself and Tom Moy are going to do Wiggies Bridge and this section in 
West End. And Alex is going to go down. Okay, yeah, Alex has got the short straw. He's going to go down um, BMX. Only the most littered bit of the whole stretch. Well, what I thought is, you yeah. see, I thought if anglers could come and help you yeah. and Cheesy, yeah. me and Tom Moy can do this bit on our own. Yeah. Because I looked the other day and there wasn't much left. No. So, um, to be fair... We might need a skip where I'm going. Yeah, I think... Mattresses, we, settees, there's everything up there. We it? need people to go and help you mm. and Cheesy. So, guys, if, help if, I can get. if you can... It's 10 to 1 on the Sunday. If you can spare three hours, mm -hmm. make your way to... Uh, Wiggies, Wiggies, we'll bypass the next track, um, and then help. Now we're not we we can't give you any bin liners. We can't give you any gloves because then it's an organised event, mm -hmm. and we don't have insurance obviously because it's just us doing it as individuals. Mm -hmm. So there's no insurance. There's no um, uh, risk assessment. So any of this stuff we have to do in the modern woke society we live in. If you if you're coming along, it's at your own risk. Mm -hmm. So you have to bring your own stuff. However. We will have vouchers to go to the ship in afterwards. Right. Yeah. So Paul, Paul Wing, mm -hmm. has is going to, kindly going to put something on. I'm not sure what. Mm -hmm. I think Cheesy's involved with this as well. Okay. They've definitely been talking about it. Yeah. Because when I saw Cheesy at his stall last week, Paul had already been. Oh, so right. I'm not sure if it's a cold sausage roll or right. warm sausage roll. Just something. Just something. But um, you're going to have to get a voucher off Alex, myself, or Cheesy, because I'll give them out to the guys to give to people. So when you go to the ship, we'll all go to the ship afterwards. You can just hand it over the bar and you get something. I don't know what it is. Pickled egg. <laughs> Half a packet of crisps. A packet of crisps to share. But we'll work that bit out. It's kind of a token gesture. Mm -hmm. So thanks to Paul for yeah. Cheesy sorting that out. Yeah. So that'll be good. And we'll get some photographs and we'll stick it up on necessary platforms and we can put a little bit back into... Um, the community and uh, people watching hopefully dog walkers will get involved and other people mm. it'd be quite good but like i said i don't think the west end bit needs too much doing because when i went you know when we put the um pictures up oh yeah yeah for winter league yeah. final i actually picked just up just erase that from my memory actually i um picked up some litter then mm. and there wasn't much no so uh, i think the council do the bit that people see the most don't they they do yeah mm. they do do that so uh and if there's nothing there, me and Tom will then hightail it to Wiggies to be a hand. Mm. Or go straight to the pub. Whatever you see fit. <clears throat> pub doesn't open until 12, so he might get us for an hour or two. Yeah. yeah. No, that'd be good. Right, so we're not going to mention it again because there's no more, no more podcasts until we get there. So mm. April the 7th. Alex might be a bit worse for wear because um, we're taking him out the night before. Yeah. Actually, Cheesy Bob might be a bit, bit worse for wear because he's coming as well. Right, right. And actually, I might be a bit worse for wear as well, because well, yeah, I'm old now, I can't handle well, it. To be fair, you've got to be, ain't you? Yeah. We'll see, won't we? Yeah, we, we'll, we'll see. see. We'll see. Right, so the theme for this podcast is how great we were at the weekend in our respective competitions. Yeah. I entered a kayak competition, yeah. having only been on a kayak twice. Three or three days, technically, but twice, I suppose. I haven't got a clue what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And you entered a, a fishing match, having never fished a fishing match before. Yeah, that's right. You may as well have not. Yeah. 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 So you all guys. Right, all right. So you guys, where did you go? So we went to the Gloucester Canal in the Census Challenge final. So we've been trying to get a team in for two or three years. It's the event is fantastic. It's like a major event. It's 33 teams of five. Do you have to qualify? Um, you used to, but now it's like you put your name on a waiting list. And this year we got in, so we're a bit late to the party, if you know what I mean. Uh, we fished it before, quite a few years ago. Um, the fishing is very technical and very hard. Do you want to explain? Because you explained to me about this. It's uh, got international so rules. So it's international rules. Obviously, blood, worm and joke are allowed. So something that we don't do around here at all, just because we don't need to. There's a few jokers live locally. There's a few, yeah. Yeah, quite Ampl a few. yeah Ampl suckers. I don't Is know. There, yeah. 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 And um, basically, if you come in the top eight or whatever it is, you qualify for the census final, which is in France, and that's like an even bigger event. There's like... What, eight, the top to eight teams qualify? Yeah, and then there's like, I don't know, 100 teams. It's like a massive, massive wow. match. Obviously, census back it. Um, the census 2018 
come over every year and fish. So they're all, it's always brilliant to see their sort of like bloodworm fishing. They do it week in, week out. They're the masters at that big canal fishing for roach and, you know, skimmers and that sort of thing. Um, obviously, the top teams in the country all take it very seriously. Um, your Barnsleys, your Dawkins, your Starlets, you know, there's, they're all good teams, very good teams. It's a great weekend. There's teams like those that go there for to win and take it very seriously. And there's other teams that go there, take it seriously, but more of a social event and a chat and, you know, the fishing sort of a, sort of a secondary thing, really. And that was a bit how we were this year. Um, not been for ages. We had a day's practice, got there a bit late and had to walk absolutely miles past everyone to get a peg because everyone's down practicing. Um, we were late back and it was just, just a bit of a rush, really. A lot of the teams are down from Wednesday, so they practice Wednesday, Thursday, Friday and then fish the two-day event. Um, so you can imagine all the teams lining up and yeah, it's, it's great. And a lot of the people stay in one sort of area. So again, you've got anglers from all over the country buzzing where the draw is. Um, Mark Downs runs it along with Matt Parsons and the census, the French guys that come over, Christoph. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a fantastic event. Um, Gloucester Canal is the perfect venue for this. There is no other venues. Why do you say that? Um, because it's like top fives deep, it's <coughs> wide, it's fairly comfortable, you don't need platforms and things like that, but the fishing can be tricky. I mean, leading up to it, the, the SIPS League, so the International Rules um, League, fish really well, consistently all the way through, but for whatever reasons, it didn't, it didn't fish very well at all. In practice, a lot of the teams caught lots of fish, which always happens whether the the canal can't take the pressure. So come first match day, there was areas that were shocking. You know, there was like in 11 peg sections, only three people managed to register a fish and they're only like tiny little fish. Um, so there is an, an art to that to try and avoid a blank. Um, obviously the rules are you can't fish more than 13 metres. You have a 10 minute pre-bait period. Um, after that, you can only make top-up ground bait balls with one hand, so you can't then like make balls with two hands and chuck them in. Um, bait limits, so you're allowed X amount of joker. So Okay, so how are these checks done? Um, well, obviously, they know roughly you have official measures, so behind your peg, you get get it all organised, and the bloke next to you checks you. Right, so it's done in yeah, pairs. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and then you, that guy checks, and you just go along. Um yeah, it's it's good, but the fishing didn't live up to no. the competition. But other years it has. And next year it'll be the same. There'll be 33 teams sell out again and everyone will do the same. Moan about the fishing, but there's a reason why the top three teams are the top three teams. Do you think they should be uh, banned so the practice should be the week before? Maybe. I think there was a lot of talk of this. Um, you know, some people said ban keep nets. Some people said... You know, there's lots of good suggestions, but I'm not sure how that'll, how that'll work because a lot of these teams come over and just fish leading up to that event. You know, there's, these teams come from all over the country. Yeah, the anglers that can get to the Sips League will fish it and they obviously have an advantage, don't they? But yeah, yeah. It's um, it's all up in the air, but I think it'll probably stay the same for next year. Yeah. Should we go through these pictures you sent me? Yeah, so um, obviously the first day... Adam Wakelin won it individually. I think he had about 10 kilos. He was, um, it's like a, an old bay thing like that, that cuts off. I think it's called Neverage. Still getting used to all the bits and bobs. But yeah, basically just uh, ligging on, catching a few bream. And, um, ligging on? Yeah. Laying over depth. Oh, right, over, yeah. Great digging. Um, They're big bream, aren't they? They are, yeah. There's, there's right mixture. There wasn't as many like small skimmers about this year. They were like proper bream yeah. or little roach, um, odd little perch, no real pommies or pie breads. Um, so he won the first day. John Price won his section first day. Did he? Yeah, he did. Yeah. Oh, he did well. He drew MPEG at Castle and had seven kilos. He had a real good day. Um, and what, then the bre bream again? Yes, bream, yeah. Um, there was, I mean, the bit that I was in, I, uh, I've never fished it before and... I said it was going to be hard. I didn't realise it was going to be as hard as what it was. 
Uh, there was no blanks in my section, but after two and a half hours, I had two fish. And Matt Godfrey paralysed the section, really. I mean, you know, they're exceptional anglers and they're all fishing. Fishing as a team, they are all got a team plan and they're just on it. He had two, I think he had two kilo. He had a good two kilos. He had some nice roach, an odd little skimmer, fish that no one else caught in the section. It was just like, where have you magic them from? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And because the fishing's so hard, you just go, wow. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. How have you just caught that? Yeah. Obviously, they're phenomenal and they do that style of fishing. That's why he's one of the best anglers in the world. Uh, he won the section and then there was Alex Clements and um, Darren Bickett next to each other. And they, as it turned out, them three teams were the top three teams overall. Darren had like just under two kilos, I think. And Alex Clements had a similar sort. And I think Alex Clements had just under two kilos. And Darren Bickett had one kilo, 420. So I'm just thinking out loud. They were top three. Paul Pasmore next to him caught a kilo. Then no one else had a kilo. It was like proper scratching. I had 600 grams. Which is a pound? Yeah, about a pound. Or oh. Over a pound. Of tiny little roach, like tiny little roach, and I had a bonus bob nut right at the death, right at the death, um, which was about four ounce, I suppose. Four ounce rough. Rud. Oh, rud. rud sorry. Oh, sorry. Rud. Bob nut rud, and um, what do I think rough? Yeah, I ended up sixth in the section. I beat everyone to my right. I beat the guy to my left, and then Jason Jeans. He had six hundred and fifty grams. And then, then it went up to like a kilo. So I'd had 50 more grams, I think. Well, I obviously fished it majorly wrong for the first two and a half hours. Do you know what you did wrong? Um, I fed too much bait. I say it every time I go there. Um, it's so technical. Little things make massive differences and being confident in what you're doing as well. Yeah. Like to me, yeah. uh, going down there, I've got no confidence in what I'm doing. You know, and when, when you fish locally, you know what you're doing is 100% right. And yeah. it's just second nature to you, isn't yeah. it? And you're well out of your comfort zone um, because we just don't, you don't fish that sort of, you know. Their uh, blood worm, keeping the blood worm was like a massive thing to us. We were just like, just cleaning it off a little bit and just playing at it. Their blood worm was, you know, was graded. It was exceptional. Um, and hook bait is key, you know. So you learn a lot. You know, yeah. you go again and you learn a bit more. And second day, you think, well, it's going to be even worse than the first day. So you change your approach. Um, second day, I drew at Hempstead Bridge, um, two about two below the bridge. I'm not sure which way. Um, and that was hard the day before. Um, but it was hard fishing. But like, I don't know. I don't know. It was it was enjoyable in a weird way. I know it sounds absolutely mad because I've had 600 grams and fishing around here, you go, what the hell, we didn't even fish that venue, do you know what I mean? But you do things slightly different and just getting in the groove of bloodworm fishing and sussing the venue out and the weather was all right as well. Um, there was a lot of blanks on the second day, but there was on the first day as well. So day one, I think there was... Um, Darwin Dorking and Barnsley both had eight points after day one, which is like mega. This is how good them three teams are compared to the rest, pretty much. Well, and Barnsley B, the Starlets B, do you know what I mean? They're, they're uh, top of the game. So they, I think that those two teams had eight, and I'm going to say Starlets had ten, which, you know, 11 peg sections, five man teams. So second day, going into it, um, well... It, it fished harder, um, a lot harder. There's more blanks, which was going to be expected, which yeah. is a nightmare when you have spent a lot of money and it's a, a lot of money weekend, but the event is mega. Yeah. Um, poor old Phil Blank the first day in his at Slimbridge. He had, I think, four caught out of his 11 pegs the oh. first day. And then the second day he drew Slimbridge down, I think. And after three hours, because they're four-hour matches, he's rung me, he said, I still ain't had a bite. Ugh. I'm thinking, oh, my God. It's like £500 weekend with bait and accommodation and travel and food. And thinking, you don't deserve this. And then he, I've got one, I've caught one. <laughs> I've caught the smallest polyrap I've ever seen in my life, but I've got one. 
So that sort of made his weekend. He didn't <laughs> blank both days. <laughs> Bless him. Um, poor old Alfie, he blanked on the second day um, and had like 500 grams the first day. I had pretty much 600 grams both days, just the fifth and a sixth of a section, which is... What size hook are you using? Uh, using like 22s, 24s. Oh. We was trying to hook the joker. The joker we had weren't particularly good. You needed Polish joker. You know, the, the top boys have got they've got the right hook mates. You know, you got it, wouldn't you, in that game? Um and then I think young Billy, he did, he did all right. He had a real tough peg the first day, drew out of it. And then second day, he drew near Matt Godfrey and was, was doing all right. And then Matt Godfrey just steamrolled him at the end, uh, just caught for the whole four hours. Um, and then Pricey, Mr. Whip, he, had, he won his section the first day with seven kilo at Castle. And then the second day, he did Hempstead Bend, like peg 45, which is like oh, everyone dreams of that peg. It's like drawing mist underwater. Is it? Yeah, it's like oh. one of them real good pegs. It's really deep, goes to a big bay. The end peg's normally the one. Um, and he, he was second in his section. If four kilo, and say 50 grams, and four kilo, 350 grams, oh, wow. won the section. So he was absolutely wounded. Um, ifs, buts, and maybe mm. so. But he ended up fifth overall as, as an individual, which was great. Um, Team wise, we come 15th, which. You know, we've got a lot to learn, hell of a lot to learn, but, you know, and we learn a lot from fishing. Um, overall winners were Starlets A, which was Darren Bickerton, Mark Downs, Cameron Hughes, Sean Ashby and Steve Emingray. They didn't have a particularly big weight, so that meant that they didn't obviously draw on a load of bream, but Steve Emingray was first and the second in his section, and he, I think he had like four bites over the whole weekend. Oh. Yeah. Um, <laughs> wow so that they they basically didn't have any blanks over the, the two days um, Barnsley had a blank on the second day and so did Dorkin um, one of your mates <coughs> Wills Moore who will love you Simon so well, the best goes the best to show blank. the best anglers yeah. blank um, one is section the first day and then but it worked out extremely close at the top um, Starlets had 29 points. Or did they have 28? No, 28.5. So the reason, the, how the point fives work out is if you tie, you get like 1.5, if you know what I mean. Or say like there's a load of blanks, which there was, however many blanks, you divide it and that gives you the score. Right. So like Phil blanked on the first day and he got 8.5. Yeah. Do you see what yeah, I mean? Yeah, That's yeah. how they do it. Um, and then... Runners up were Dorkin with twenty nine, so like half a point oh, missed out by. Wow, They've been really unlucky in that competition. And then third was Barnsley A, and they had thirty one. It's like the winter league, isn't it? It's very close, yeah. very close. Barnsley B were fourth. Um, who was fifth? I think it might have been the Welsh Welsh team. Might have been fifth. Um, Hot Rods did alright. I think they were like sixth or seventh, something like that. Um, and obviously, young Barnaby won his section on the second day. Yeah, I've got a picture here from his. Yeah. Nice bag of skinners. Yeah, he, he had roach. a lovely day. Um, yeah, fantastic to see him doing well. Yeah, that's good, isn't it? Yeah. And then individual wise, Frankie uh, Jam and Jelly, or that's what we nickname, it's easy to say Jam and Jelly. And um, he won his section both days. There was two anglers that did that. That was Frankie. I think he had like seven kilo the first day and a three kilo the second day. And then runner up with two points was Will Raisin. Have you ever heard of him? Mm, don't know who he is. No, no never no. heard of him. No. Um, he had two points, but obviously a lot less. Um, and then third, I think there was a host of anglers on three points. A lot. So Pricey was one of them, wasn't he? Yeah, he was fifth overall. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. yeah, it's one of them things, really. That's good, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. That's amazing, really. So, you, you, so do you have to do the winning? Do you um? Because you competed this year, do you get first dibs next yes, year? Yes. Yeah, that's how we got in this year. Basically, if teams drop out, then you're on the waiting list to get in. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Cool. I've just mate, we've got some match results. That's what I was remembering. Where, Where from? Toad Hall. Ribbit. 
Yeah. I've never been there. I've heard about Toad Hall. Obviously, when I used to work at Westwood. Wind. Wind. In the Willows. Oh, yeah. Yeah. His Moley Anyways. worked there. Sorry? Moley worked there. Must do, must yeah. do. Yeah. I bet they're missing us, aren't they? The PW crew. I think they are, yeah. yeah. Have you had any contact with them? They'll all be in this weekend. Yeah, it's, it's Spank. It's Easter weekend, isn't it? And they'll all be at Ferry. Oh, right, yeah. so... Yeah, yeah. Ringer's Dark, Ringer's Natural, in every other bag this weekend. I thought they're sponsored by uh, Bait Tech. Can't possibly comment on that. They're all... <laughs> if you go to Ferry, it's like religion. You've got to take a bag of each. And now, now it's all single red maggot. Big red maggot. Oh, back to yeah, the Yeah, it's been that, uh, the Guru Underwater video. Have you seen it yet? No. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. It's at Ferry Meadows. Obviously, people haven't seen it. I'd advise to look at, watch it. Um, it's brilliant watching the bream pick the hook bait up and the tips not even moving and match. Really? Yeah, how the way like free maggots sit. And bearing in mind, this is Steve Ringer, the best feeder angler in on the planet. Um, and basically, they're saying his rigs are all wrong. Amazing, isn't it? And he's won more money on there than anyone. So, are you fishing it? I might go for a trip out tomorrow. If uh, I'm not going on my own, I don't like being billionaire, mate. It's a bit weird going on your own ferry med, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. You got any backup down there? Bit of a reputation. Yeah, need backup. Anyway, going back to the census challenge, and, uh, you're going to be back in it next year as a team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, we spoke before you went because you said it's all completely different. But you don't learn unless you put yourself into. No, you're completely out of your comfort zone. You know, well, I was anyway, completely out of my comfort zone, and. Yeah, definitely go again. Um, yeah, good laugh. That's what it's all about, isn't it? Yeah, you need to have a banter, don't you? Should I tell you about my little recce? Go on, then. Right, so this weekend was meant to be the World Predator Classic you, uh, England qualifier, yeah. which me and Dan Brackley won last year. Yeah. So off that, we're going to be fishing in Holland in in August, I think it is. Yeah, yeah. I can't remember what it is. This year, because we, we won it last year. So... Mm -hmm. This was cancelled about six weeks ago. And everyone's going, what? So there's this event at Langorse Lakes organised by the South Wales Kayak Association. And it would have had about 15, 20 competitors in mm -hmm. it. Now, obviously, the WPC wasn't just a boat comp, it was a kayak comp as well. Yeah. So all the kayakers suddenly went, right, let's go to Langorse. And Andy, in his wisdom, thought, I've got to start doing this kayak comp. Mm -hmm. I'll put my name down as well. Oh, dear. What's the worst that could happen? Well... Cut a long story short. I left here about half seven Wednesday morning, got there about half four after having a blowout and all sorts of things happening to me on the... You're not going to mention it. A40. <laughs> Went for practice on the Thursday and that was my... Th th third day. Th second, third day out in a kayak. Yeah. Caught a couple, thought I'd be all right. Completed it, mate. Yeah. And on the Saturday, it was 35 mile an hour gusts. And I don't mind admitting, I thought I was going to die. <laughs> on a plastic tub. With all your electrics. Yeah, with thousands of pounds worth of electrics. <laughs> I thought, oh, this is just going to go over. Yeah. So I, I, I basically went as far up the lake as I could to get out of the wind. Couldn't catch any jacks in the reeds. And, and I, I blanked as well. Oh, yeah, so I, blank. I, I was a bit fed up. So I went out on the Sunday. And uh, I did have a good day on the Sunday afternoon when the wind dropped down. And I felt a bit more confident on a bit of plastic out <laughs> of the lake. But going back to the banter, so I, I had been winding people up in our little WhatsApp group. Right. And the loser of our little group had to wear... Oh, dear. ...the hat. Oh, the hat dear. Of shame. Oh dear. And a big gold chain with a... Uh, lure. Yeah, lure on it. So I think it's only fair that I do this now. Right. Because uh, I have got a picture of me actually there. So, yeah, I'm now the wearer of this. And you do look special. I'm very special, mate. So, there we go. Oh, good God, what's going on? What are you doing? I just want to make sure I can hear. Oh. No. Oh, Bob Nudd doesn't have this problem next no, week. No, no. Should we give him the chain? <laughs> so, there we go. I had to wear this. So, you didn't get much uh, banter? They're, no, they're, they're not very good at banter. What? No, I gave, my, I gave myself banter. Oh, right. Yeah, I had to present it to myself. Mm -hmm. And they all laughed at me. But, um, well, I do that anyway, don't I? Yeah, so I need to get better because the next one we go on, I can't be wearing this again. No. No, I can't present it to myself. It's again. a bit like the chip shop t-shirt, I suppose, isn't it? Yeah, you have to 
you have to kind of it. embrace it. Yes. But um, yeah, it's a bit, yeah. So this is for the kayak angle. And obviously I'm a boat angler, so as soon as that wind got up, mate, I was... So you're, you're a boat wanker. Oh, hashtag boat wanker. Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm known as. So a lot to learn. But I really enjoyed it. And yeah, had more trailer issues yesterday coming home. So it really? was, yeah. But like you've been for a long week. I don't know how much it cost me. Uh, no, it's a joke. It is a joke. I mean, I, I kept, I slept in my camper. It was, it was 90 quid. And I, was, I was there for five nights. So it was real cheap. Yeah. And the food was really well, yeah. well priced. But put on top of that, having to buy new tyres and everything else that goes wrong. And all the bits you got to sort out before your next trip, haven't you? Maybe the alcohol consumption uh, didn't help yeah, as well. that doesn't yeah. help, does it? This is, this is a bit of a legendary place for um, excess alcohol consumption on right. Thursday night. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was a bit dangerous. Messy. Very messy. But it was good. So that was good fun. And uh, like I said, the only way up now is up. Mm. Because uh, my first kite comp I probably came joint last with a few people. But two people did capsize. Did they? And I wasn't one of them. They lose all their gear, or I presume so. Dangerous, isn't it? That it is. Yeah, yeah. it was really, really windy, yeah. and that's why I, um, I, I, I hightailed it out of the wind well as much as I could. But anyway, that was my little trail weekend. weekend. Yeah, yeah. Right. Have you got any match results? Um, no. Funny enough, the rivers are sharp. The rivers are sharp. I have. Right. Uh, I might have not done this. I've done those. So this is from Derek Skinner. Yeah. So this is, this must be, is that a commercial? Must be. Toad always, yeah. It must be because of the 20th of March. Yeah. So Derek sent me some results from a Spielsby AA match results on Toad Hall. I'm sure we mentioned this last year, Toad Hall. Yeah. 20th of March, this one. So, oh, I was about to read out the top down. He's done it in a... Yeah, he's done it peg, like peg order, hasn't he? Oh, these must be cap, corrupt. So... Peg six was Tony Hancock, first with £41.15 ounces. Yeah. Second on peg four was Neil Williams with 36.12. And third was Dave Andrew with £24.4 four ounces. And Dave Ashmore and Dennis Houghton... Didn't do as well as they normally do. No, they didn't, did they? Mm. The Dennis and Dave show did not dominate. No. no. So thanks for sending that in, Derek. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, if we get any more, we'll read them out in two weeks' time. Right. What else have we got to talk about? Not a lot, really. Um, You've got your festival? Yeah, we've got a two-day Easter festival at Rookery this weekend. Um, is, it, is it full? No, not yet, no. Um, but it should be a good match. The fish are waking up now. They're moving about. I mean, yeah, there's fish everywhere. Can people enter on Wednesday, Thursday? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's still space if people want to fish. Um, it's quite big money. Entry, it's 120 quid but for two days, but you can't win what you don't put in, can you? No. Um, no. So I'm looking forward to that. Got, obviously, Friday and Monday as bank holidays this weekend, so hopefully the weather's nice. If the weather's Hold on a minute, but so people aren't being at work on Friday and Monday? No, it's called a bank holiday. Oh, they need to go to work. Yeah. Not... I enjoy it if everyone's at work. Do you? I bet yeah. you do, yeah. Yeah, so um, hopefully busy weekend with that. Um, and that's it, really. Just plodding on. Cool. Plodding this on. is the silly season now, and it's start off. It's uh, the start off. It's not silly yet, put it that way. But um, hopefully, the silly season will be won't be too far away. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Right. I think that's about it, isn't it? Yeah, we've w- waffled on. We? we have. Yeah, we've done a good waffle this week. Just to remind everybody of the uh, litter pick. Yeah. So. 10 to 1. I need as much help as I can get. Sunday the 7th of April. Get down Wiggies. Mm-hmm. Get down the bypass. And then we'll have a beer or two in the ship afterwards. And don't forget, two weeks' time, mm-hmm. we should have the legend on as well. Mm-hmm. As Sir Bob. Sir Bob. So get any questions you have for him to us, and we'll do our best to uh, yeah. put them to him. But mate, the not, no daft ones. Daft ones will just get vetted. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Anything else you'd like to add? No, that's it. I'm ready for bed, I am. I don't know about you, I'm like, still tired. From yeah, weekends. I woke up this morning thinking, where am I, I'm over caravan. No. You, you know when you're that tired, you sort of do something quickly and you give yourself a headache, don't you? Or do you get clumsy? Yeah, you, you think, why have I just done that? Yeah, or well, you pick something up and you kind of go... Everything, everything seems like you're in slow-mo. Yeah. 
Yeah, I know, it's crazy, isn't it? A bit like us talking now. Yeah. yeah. Let's wrap this up. Right, we'll see you for the last episode in two weeks' time. Yeah. So get on the bank, get down rookery, get fishing, obviously, yeah. not on the rivers. Yeah. And uh, we'll see you in two weeks' time. See you then.